Good morning. Um, good evening to me here, and it's good to um, be here again. Um, thank you for the uh, invitation. A really encouraging um, spiritual gifts there. Um, you know, the Lord telling us, you know, He's not going to put us in harm's way, and uh, telling us, you know, He's given us a straight and narrow path, and to uh, carry on, He will take us through. And um, an encouragement again that He set us on the path of redemption. So that's really, really good. Um, that's quite encouraging, really. Um, and I like the analogy of the car moving parts. And one of the spiritual gifts today, back at home, talked about how we are called together to complement one another, to support one another. That's interesting, isn't it? The sum of the parts of the car makes the makes the car to go, the whole to move. And and that's that's what it's all about. That's fellowship together. Um, and then a really good example there of Mordecai, um, you know, natural laws and natural behaviors, natural attitudes versus godly behaviors and godly stand. Um, and this is what we take. And, you know, that conversion from darkness, as we heard in the closing spiritual gift there, you know, as we heard again in another gift before that, uh, we are we are expectation is set towards the light, not to darkness. And um, and for us, you know, Paul was taken out of darkness and brought in the pathway of light set on that road to uh, redemption I, I want to talk today um, about um, something which has been on my mind it's twofold you know it's a coin it's got two sides and uh, today's talk is entitled do you care do you care uh, and that question um, is twofold it's to the shepherds and it's also to um, uh, to the flock and we're going to pick it up in Ezekiel 34 if we turn if you turn with me to Ezekiel Ezekiel um, 34 pick it up from there um, I'm going to try and paraphrase a few of the um, verses as I go through so in Ezekiel 34 this is to the shepherds um, and the Lord is really speaking about a concern he had uh, to the church um, to the shepherds who He's appointed to lead his people. We heard in the spiritual gifts about one particular um, prophet there saying he thought he was the only person left, and the Lord told him, "Actually, no. There are seven other. I have a, I have a, another seven thousand um, who are um, faithful and have not uh, bowed their knee to Baal. And you know, and for me, that's a contextual thing about the way of the world." Let's pick it up in verse one, but I'm going to read from the Amplified um, um, as you do that. I'm going to read the first four verses and, and, and summarize a point. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, even to the spiritual shepherds, thus says the Lord God, woe to the spiritual shepherds of Israel who feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the sheep? You eat the fat. You clothe yourselves with wool, you kill the fatlings, but you do not feed the sheep. The diseased and weak you have not strengthened. The sick you have not healed. The hurt and crippled you have not bandaged. Those gone astray you have not brought back. The lost you have not sought to find, but with force and hard-heartedness uh, you have ruled them. And and, I, and there's a scripture in Matthew 18, verse 12, which I'll read out to you, which is the, is the, is the parable of, uh, what do you think if a man has a hundred sheep, but one of the sheep goes, gets lost or goes astray, uh, wanders off, would he not leave the other 99 on the hill and go to look for the lost sheep? And what does that mean to me as a shepherd, as a pastor? It means that, as we heard in the spiritual gifts today, um, there is a need for shepherds at this particular point in time to be really mindful of what society and the flock is going through the church at large. Even now, the pressures of the flock, the pressures that the flock might be going through, um, the pandemic has raised a number of challenges. Uh, the mind impact that that has, you know, brought to bear for the world at large and we heard some of those things about not despairing. We heard that emphasis said a number of times as preachers yesterday. Do not despair. Do not despair. And we know we read in Luke 21, um, verse 25. We heard that said today as well, um, back, back of the ranch. Um, and I read out the scripture. You don't need to turn to it. Men's hearts 
failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaking and in the verse before that it said there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations distress of nations distress of nations isn't that what we're experiencing in part today isn't that what we're seeing today global and then he goes and say um uh, with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring with perplexity that word perplexity when you look it up talks about to be in a state of com confusion to be confused mentally to find yourself in a state of complication to feel uncertainty and we heard one or two things there said about anxiety panic attack depression just disorientation from the norm and even more so now is our job to be on the job so to speak even more so now because and then we heard about distractions here and um people's people's mind you know kind of losing focus uh, because all this sort of stuff they're having to complicate uh, navigate through and, and and all the complications they have to try and manage and in a setting which forces them to be perhaps homebound and isolated alone which is not the norm of humanity we're social creatures at large some of us in the norm might be quiet people but in, you know there's a bell-shaped curve and you have a normal distribution of people we are social creatures and we are designed to come together and we have challenging perplexities upon ourselves upon our mind in a manner in a way we've never seen before and it's weighing on our mind it's weighing on our thoughts and so much so we know in Ecclesiastes it says through, uh, through dreams comes through a multitude of business of the mind of thoughts so you know how much more we eat we dispel what the body does not eat so the mind filters and absorbs a lot of things and that manifests itself in natural dreams and stuff like that and so it's in the multitude of business we we find ourselves dreaming about these and so in the multitude of thoughts likewise also we can feel this anxieties in different ways we can feel this anxious an anxiousness and so on and so forth but we're encouraged to be still and not to be fearful to be not anxious and and bothered about things in verse 5 is equal 34 i carry on and they were scattered because there was no shepherd and when they were scattered i'm reading from the amplified and when they were scattered they became food for all the wild for all the wild beasts of the field and for me the wild beasts of the field are the things i've just been describing the pandemic like things at large in society today the things that roam around basically things that look to make you and me a prey spiritually you know the battle of the mind the things we have to overcome and so we become prey to all this mysterious and complicated and confusion confusing things and we ask ourselves how do we handle these things In verse 6 my sheep wandered through all the mountains and up on every high hill yes my sheep were scattered upon the face of the earth and no one searched or sought for them therefore you spiritual shepherds hear the word of the Lord as I live says the Lord God surely because my sheep became a prey and my sheep became food for every beast or succumbed to the mental confusion or the state of large of society today is another way to look at that in our context today and my sheep became food or you know you know God exposed to these things uh, for every beast of the field because there was no shepherd neither did my shepherd search for my sheep but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my sheep therefore O oh, you spiritual shepherds hear the word of the lord verse says the lord god in verse 10 behold i am against the shepherds and i will require my sheep at their hand and cause them to cease feeding the sheep neither shall the shepherds feed themselves anymore i will rescue my sheep from their mouths uh, that they may not uh, be food uh, for them and we know in our fellowship that the shepherds that we have by and large do care for the flock and all the people said but in our society today we have many churches out there many fellowships out there that are just in a complete state of confusion and 
pardon the expression, as the Americans will say, monetizing people's emotional fears, monetizing, monetizing people's anxieties, monetize, monetizing people's des desperation, and not really giving them the wholesome food, the wholesome shepherding, spiritual food, guidance and direction that the Lord will have uh, to be given to his shepherd. We are the light, a light that is lit on the hills in the city, we are the light, and, uh, you know, and the Lord likens that and says, you're, you know, you're, the, you're the light, like a city set on the hills, which cannot be hidden. A, a city set on the hills, an illuminating light from an advantage position, flooding the plains, flooding the valleys, flooding all the surrounds. And that's who we are by our testimony, by the way we handle things, by our reactions even in those challenging and difficult times. And we heard today in the ministry, uh, Pastor Sammy was with us from Kenya today, and the ministry there was this, that we need, and that came out on the spiritual gifts before the talk as well, we must, no matter what pressures come upon us, we must, we must remain focused. We must not let anything displace us in terms of our way and our serving the Lord. Um, we have to care not just the shepherds, all of us. And then the second part of the uh, of the chapter now turns to the flock. And it's interesting, as I said, there's two sides of the coin. There's the one side of what the shepherds have to do, and then there's the other side concerned of the flock as well. And then the Lord starts to speak to the flock in verse 11. I read this from the King James. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I am, I even I will both search my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy on dark day, in darkness. And we've already had, heard that said a couple of times in spiritual gifts today. The way of God is to bring people out, his flock out of darkness, into the light. And that's what we are about. And that's uh, as a flock, sheep to sheep, we are there to compliment one another, to exhort and to encourage. As we heard in the one of the spring, we're not going to gossip. I'm not going to put you in harm's way. I'm not going to say harm before you. And that's the point that the Lord is making, that he's not there to trip us up. Even though uh, things are happening here that we do not understand. In fact, we heard very clearly in one of the spiritual gifts, um, which ties into Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 15. And this is what it says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 15. That which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been, and God required that which is past. And and it's interesting um, when in the spiritual gifts it said, I not blind to what you're going through. I've heard your cry. Even before you were born, I heard your cry. Isn't that really confirming? That which is to be hath already been. And God required that which is past. We're going through. God already saw us on this time before we even came on the face of this earth. He heard at this point in time our cry. That's the Lord prophesying and telling us he's in control and he's in charge of our lives. He's the shepherd of our souls, bishop of our souls. We need not fear. We just need to stay on that path, continue to trust and believe and not allow ourselves to be distracted. Um, in verse 13, and I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and, and, uh, and I will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country. This verse is interesting. It's both literal and prophetic of what is to happen to us. It's literal in the sense of we know the um, God's natural nation, uh, the natural nation of Israel uh, has been reconstituted, has a place in, in the Middle East and it's physically populated now today in a hostile environment. That has happened itself. And so the prophecies of Christ, or the prophecies that, uh, that God has given to us has come to fruition and these things will continue to be. And the promises of what's going to happen beyond this time will also come to fruition. In verse 14, I will feed them in a good pasture and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. There shall they lie in a good fold and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock, and I will cause them to lie down, that is to rest, saith the Lord. That's again a promise in Psalm 23 verse one, uh, verse 2. 
He lets me rest in green pastures, abundance. It's speaking of abundance. He leads me to calm, quiet waters. The Lord is my shepherd, verse 1, I shall not want. That is talking about um, um, uh, having uh, gr- uh, abundance and not lacking. And that, that's the Lord saying that you are not, you know, you're, uh, you, you know, you have a, the sufficiency through the Holy Spirit to overcome all things and through the brothers and sisters, through the fellowship. But he is a father overarching to us. In verse 16, Ezekiel 34, in, in the Amplified I read now, I will seek that which was lost and bring back that which was, which has strayed. And I will bandage the hurt and the crippled and will strengthen the weak and the sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong, those who have become hard-hearted and perverse. I will feed them with judgment and punishment. And so even the flock, we need to take heed. We heard about heeding the word of God. We heard in a testimony today of a brother who said, I acknowledge the fact that I did something wrong. And yet when I turned to the Lord, the Lord blessed my situation and the outcome was more favorable. And that is the point. And we will see that in the closing verse in a moment that if we do things God's way, instead of stumbling, instead of obstacles, instead of, you know, um, um, heartache, uh, we can avoid those things. And the thing that we are seeking, the Lord will bless us with. The things that we desire, the Lord will give to us. Um, because we give it all to, all to the Lord. He knows deep down. Psalm 37 verse 4, delight thyself in the Lord, and I will give thee the desires of thine heart. This is a promise. It's not a lie. This is God telling us that he cares for us and he wants to bless us and he wants to take us through. And so we can really put our confidence in the Lord and not be ashamed of who we are so that we can boldly say to man, and I will not fear what man should do unto me because the Lord is my help. And that is a better place to be and to have that kind of confidence uh, concerning the things of God. Now, moving on. Um, in verse 17, reading again from the Amplified, and as for you, O my flock, thus says the Lord God, behold, I judge between sheep and sheep, between the rams and the great he goats, the malicious and hard hearted. Is it too little for you that you feed on the best pasture, but you must tread down with your, uh, with your, with your feet the rest of the pasture and to have drunk of the waters clarified by subsiding. And it's a bit bit of a mouthful there when you read even the Amplified. What the Lord is saying is, even the Lord knows the testimony of, uh, of, he knows the testimony of each person in his his flock. And the encouragement here is, you know, there is a day, yes, there is a day of judgment. And we heard about the path of redemption, which we'll come to in a moment, which we'll read. Yes, the Lord has set a path of redemption, but we can be encouraged and we can be confident that if we do and obey God's God's ways and follow His words, there's no fear. There's no fear of judgment, and we'll get we'll pass through those things. But then every now and then you might come across the sheep that doesn't want to do things God's way, and actually in reality it's not God they're upset, and they're actually upsetting themselves. They're frustrating their walk unnecessarily, and really hindering the promises of God coming to fruition in their lives. And the, the Lord doesn't want that. Hence this emphasis. And this encour- hence the encouragement to do things his way, because it will go well with us. And I just read that part again. And then to have drunk of the waters clarified by subsiding, uh, that is uh, clean waters. Um, it's interesting, the fellowship, I said the fellowship as a place of offering, a place of acceptable offering of behaviors, acceptable behaviors. Um, and then the Lord challenges the, you know, the, those who were coming and foul the fellowship or foul the rest of the water, as the context has been spoken to here in the scripture, with their feet. And what the Lord is talking to there is the selfish behavior of this other sheep. And it's drunk clean water, and then it muddies the others for the, for the rest of the sheep that comes along. It, it, you know, and that's kind of like a selfish behavior. And the Lord says, I don't want that in my fellowship. And, and in society today, and there's a reason why I'm emphasizing that today, in society today, what do you see at large? Selfish behavior selfish behavior i mean you just only have to look at the debate in the last 48 hours on the vaccine here and vaccine not there vaccine exported and vaccine not exported that's just one example but that is humanity for you all the way through but we are not like that and we are ready to take up our shirt and to give it to somebody else and to as it were support that person in verse 19 
um, written from the King James. And my flock, must they feed on what your feet have trodden and drink what your feet has fouled? Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I myself will judge between fat sheep and improvised sheep or fat goats and lean goats. The Lord does say this anyway, doesn't he? Matthew 24, 25, I'll come back. When I come back, I'm going to separate the sheep to the right and then the goat to the left. And so again, uh, this is not disconnected. There's a connection there as well. Um, verse 21, because you push with side, uh, with side and with shoulder and thrust with your horns, all those that have become weak and diseased till you have scattered them abroad by selfish conduct behaviors, which are unfortunately copied. And that, for me, um, and it's important that I'm a good example, irrespective of whatever responsibilities I have. And like the Lord is saying, it's likewise for us, we show care to each other by making sure our testimony stands up to the light, not just in the fellowship, especially, especially in a work context, especially at school, especially at uni, in the neighborhood, in the supermarket, on the road, uh, doing your tax return, which I had to do that yesterday, all this sort of stuff, all the small details, you know, being a good testimony, because that's how we get the blessing. We do it in secret, and the Lord that tells us in Matthew 6, who rewards us openly. And Isaiah 58, I just want to turn to Isaiah 58. I'm going to come back to Ezekiel later on. I want to go, to, please turn with me to Isaiah 58, verse 13. Isaiah 30, 58, sorry, Isaiah 58 and verse 13. I'll read from the King James. If you turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath their delight, the holy of the Lord honourable, and shalt honour him, not doing thy own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words, then... Then shall thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of promises of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Well, the Lord is saying here in a modern day translation, so just really get the context and encouragement here. If you watch your step on the Sabbath, and you don't use my holy day for personal advantage, a day like today, we're gathered together, we see the importance of coming together, and we're here to encourage one another to be fed, to be encouraged, to be corrected, to be redirected, to be loved, to be really there to support one another, to feed each other, because that's the way we're going to survive. That's where we're going to overcome. That's where we're going to get through. And it goes on to say, if you treat the Sabbath as a day of joy, God's holy day as a celebration, if you honor it, treat it with respect by refusing business as usual, running here and there, setting aside good quality time with your creator, then you'll be free to enjoy God. Oh, I'll make you ride high and soar above it all. I'll make you feast on the inheritance of your ancestor Jacob. That is the, uh, the, the promises of faith, which we read about in Hebrews, the promises uh, that comes through, the, uh, uh, through Abraham, through Christ to us. Yes, God says so. In Hebrews 10, 25, um, you know, we read about not forsaking the coming together of one another like the manner of some. In, in the modern day translation, this is what it says in Hebrews 10, 25. You should not stay away from the church fellowship meetings as some are doing, but you should encourage each other to stay faithful to Christ and to other believers. Exactly what we're doing here today. And even more so, as you see the day of the Lord when Christ will return. And that's exactly what we heard that in the spiritual days today. And another translation, modern day translation of Hebrews, Hebrews 10, 25. Let's see how inventive we can be in encouraging love and helping out, not avoiding worshiping together as some do, but spurring each other on, especially as we see the big day approaching. Um, the day of redemption, redemption beckons. That, you know, we look up with great expectation and rejoicing. Others are despairing. We don't have to. And I know it's easier said than that, easier said than done. And through daily prayer, through daily prayer, we overcome. The God has given us the best defense, the best tool uh, to put our minds out of a confused state into a not confused state, so to speak. Um, um, in Ezekiel, let's go back to Ezekiel chapter 20, uh, 34. 
is equal to 34. And we'll pick it up in verse 23, 25. Um, verse 23. Therefore, will I save my flock, and there shall no more be a prey, and I will judge between cattle and cattle. We've already talked to that. And I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my servant David. He shall feed them and shall be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David, a prince among them, a ruler among them, I, the Lord, have spoken it. And I will make with them a covenant of peace. And I will cause, cause the evil beast to seize out of the land. And they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. So, um, it's quite a lot in there. In verse 23, he's actually come to fruition. David, the David uh, mention here is the, uh, the prophetic reference to Jesus Christ. We know that David was the ancestor of Christ in natural birth. David actually means beloved. We know that we, each and every one of us, are beloved of God. God loves us. We heard that today. And he wants the best for us. And that's true. We need to believe that God loves us. And we are likewise to render the same to others. David here was a type of Messiah and that Jesus came and fulfilled that. This has happened. And then we read about showers of blessing in verse 26. And I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in this season there shall be showers of blessing. Every time I read that, I always want to break into the hymn. And, and it's, it's really, really true, isn't it? And um, just as nature follows its set course, so uh, the benefits of the new covenant do come upon us as well. They are real and they are accessible daily through praying in the Holy Spirit and reading the Word of God. Brothers and sisters, we have we are in a state of blessing. We are blessed. Um, blessed uh, you know, modern English is happy to be in a state of being happy and fortunate, you know, in a state of grace. And that's exactly what we've been given. We have that. In verse 27, and the tree of the field shall yield its fruit and the earth shall yield its increase. And my people shall be secure in the land and there shall be confident and know, understand and realize that I am the Lord when I have broken the bars of their yoke and have delivered them out of the hand of those who made slaves of them. And there shall no more be a prey to the nations, nor shall the beasts of the earth devour them. They shall dwell safely. None shall make them afraid in the day of the Messiah's reign. We know that's going to be true when we get to the promised land. That will be the kind of life we're going to have. No more tears, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more death, etc. But even now, today, and you might, you know, we go through these challenges, this um, difficulties and pandemic stuff and trials and tribulations but the lord is saying is possessing your soul possessing your soul you have the holy spirit and we heard very clearly that he's not going to put us in harm way and he's going to lead us through he's going to take us through if we cast our eyes upon him look at him focus our eyes upon him no matter what the hurdles might be no matter what the obstacles or the mountains might be god will take us through so that we are in a place that we are abounding yielding fruit yielding spiritual increase and being a good testimony to our brothers and sisters and so on and so forth it's interesting that we tie this back to Luke chapter 4 and we go to Luke chapter 4 I'm coming back to Ezekiel I'm going to finish off there in a moment but come with me to Luke chapter 4 and I'm going to go to verse 16 so Jesus came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as, as the custom was it was there on the Sabbath um, I mean, the whole point about the Sabbath, the day like this is not that it's especially any more holy, but there's a day that we collectively find to come together to worship God. We are in the rest anyway, that's the point to make. And stood up to read in verse, um, pick it up in verse 18. He picks up the book of his eyes and he begins to read. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Themes that we were reading before in Ezekiel 34. To preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of spiritual sight to the blind and natural as well. And to set at liberty them that are bruised or in prison. And in verse 19, to preach the acceptable, acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it back to the minister and he sat down and he said in verse 21, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. That's about the first coming of Jesus Christ. I just want to 
point something out to you. Some of you might know this already. We're going to turn to Isaiah 61 now, verse 2. But before, before we turn to Isaiah 61, in verse 19 of Luke 4, can you see that that's where Jesus Christ stopped? In the prophecy of Isaiah 61, Jesus stopped at verse 19 to preach the accept, acceptable year of the Lord. Now turn with me to Isaiah 61. In Isaiah 61, we'll pick it up in verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. This is what a true shepherd does, seeking those that are lost in challenging times, and even in non-challenging times. And then in verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable, acceptable year of the Lord. And what's interesting, he stops there in Luke chapter 4 and verse um, 19. He doesn't go further than that. And why is that, you might wonder? Well, the, in my, you know, it is, it is widely accepted um, that the, reading the rest to the end of uh, uh, to verse 11 is about the second coming. So he's already set in motion the first, the bits about the first coming. And then it goes goes on to talk there in verse 2, and I'm not going to read any further. You can read the rest of it yourself for homework. And he says, And the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. Now, so, so the day of vengeance has to come first. The um, the calamities, you know, so you know, perilous times and all those sort of things we're going through now. And then the day of vengeance will come. The second coming of the Lord will come through. And then we go into this age where you and I will be... Um, priests and ministers to God and to Christ and we'll go um, we get translated we overcome the state of this natural uh, earth and we become spiritual beings that's what we're looking towards that's what we're looking forward to and the rest therefore will take its natural um, uh, for, they will naturally come to fruition um, but but that is yet to come this is all kind of linked to the second coming of the Lord and uh, but it's something we'll look forward to. So I guess the point I'm making is if the first bit has happened, even though we're going through challenges and difficulties at this point in time in life, be encouraged, be inspired that the Lord loves you and the Lord is coming back for you and I. And yes, as we heard again in the spiritual gifts today, many, many are called, but few are chosen. Just because we're few in numbers does not mean that we're little um, in terms of are being blessed by the things of God. God looks at us, God sees us as being faithful, and we need to be faithful to Christ and faithful to our brothers and sisters as well. And um, anyway, let's go back to Ezekiel um, chapter 34, and I wanna finish off, uh, Ezekiel 34, I wanna finish off in um, the last few verses there. Um, pick it up in verse 29. Um, and I will raise up for them a planting of crops for renown, and there shall be no there shall there shall be no more consumed with hunger in the land, nor bear the reproach or shame of the nations any longer. And verse 30, then shall they know positively that I, the Lord their God, am with them, and that they, the house of Israel, are my people, says the Lord God. And verse 31 is one I really love. I've got highlighted in my Bible or marked in my Bible. And it says, and I'm going to read this out to you, and, so, and that you my sheep, I'm reading now in the modern, in the Amplified, and that you, my sheep, the sheep of my pasture, are only men, and I am your God, says the Lord God. God claims us. We heard in one other spiritual gift that God says, I am a, I'm a, I'm a jealous God, or if you like, a zealous God. God claims us, and we claim God. And all the people said, because we are going to be in his kingdom, and we're going to be joyful, and just imagine the day he bursts through the clouds and all kindreds of the earth see him. And we are translated to see all this thing happening in the twinkle of an eye. And we're coming down. And it's amazing glory proceeding from him. And we are part of that entourage. And people looking, what is this? And we're going together into the, you know, into the city of Jerusalem. And there shall we be forever with the Lord. There's no more separation from him. God with us, Emmanuel fulfilled 
um, and, and then we become as ministers to the world at large. And that's just the first thousand years and beyond a thousand years. And we know who else, who knows what else has got in store for us. And the enemy, you know, at the end of this thousand year reign, even during the 10,000 year, we were looking, I had all this amazing advantage and I blew it. I blew it. And look at this, lower than me, and yet now higher than me, and they are above me. And we need to be wise to his ways, to the wiles of the enemy, with a shield of faith, as we often will say. Be smart and recognize the time we're in and not let him take us down, not let him take our brothers and sisters down. You see a brother or a sister faltering, grab them by the scruff of the neck, give them a good shake and maybe you'll slap them. No, no, don't do that. It's recorded on YouTube. A real good spiritual wake up call is what I'm saying. Give them a good love and a good hug. I'm really saying, do you know what you're trying to, what you're, what you're going to miss out on here? Do you know what you have? Don't let go. Not now not now not now hang in there stay the course stay the path and the lord's going to come back and get you and i'm going to finish off on um, i may have shared this with you before but it's something that sits firmly in my mind is the lesson of nehemiah and you can read about it in nehemiah chapter 4 and the thing i take out of nehemiah chapter 4 he had a lot of challenges a lot of overcoming a lot of difficulties from people in authority, from his own people, many times people trying to frustrate the work he was trying to do for the things of God. Isn't that the same with us today as well, with all the things we have to contend with? But you know what Nehemiah constantly did? And you read about that in Nehemiah chapter 4, verses 7 to 9. What Nehemiah did was he constantly turned to God and he constantly prayed, as we heard in the testament of our sister Alice. Constantly prayed constantly prayed prayer was his defense even though the situation was unrelenting no matter how unrelenting situations might be in our lives in the lives of those who love in the lives of those who want to know the grace of god prayer is our defense and we have the tool speaking in tongues just pray and pray and pray until you have the peace of mind that passes on understanding, no matter what. Be alert, be watchful, be engaged, be enthusiastic, be committed, have a committed attitude. Make sure prayer is your defense, no matter how unrelenting situations might be. And the Lord promises us a, 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 an amazing abundance of victories if we remain faithful to him and his people. And all people said, Thank you.